Welcome to Societal Shapers, a podcast by PL Cadilla, the place to get inspired, find your purpose and courage, and get tools to become the next female leader, creating real results and meaningful changes. Hi, welcome to the next ep- episode of the Societal Shapers. Today I have here with me uh, Karina, and Karina will be sharing a little bit more about her background, and I'll let her take it, take it away. Hi, so PL. Hi, hi. Thanks so much for joining the podcast. We'd love to hear more about your background uh, and to know more about your experience as a young female leader. Yeah, sure. So, um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, Yeah, a little bit about my background. I uh, come from a family of five. I have two brothers and I'm the middle child of the family. I grew up uh, all my life in Malaysia. And I went to, I left to America for college and university. And after university, I worked, um, I moved to Silicon Valley to work there um, for two years. And I think the, the five years that I was in America was crucial because that was the time where um, I actually entered adulthood and I actually felt like, you know, it was like the pivotal moment for me to grow up. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, right now I work in data science and analytics. Um, I also uh, am very passionate about youth empowerment and I um, champion those through, um, you know, nonprofits that I work for. So, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. How old are you now, Karina? I'm 25 this year. Okay, so very young at the peak and prime of your age, which is amazing. So tell me a bit more about how did you end up in the US and how did you end up uh, you know, marrying psychology and data science? Yeah, so um, I always knew that I wanted to gain some overseas exposure and, you know, what better way than to go to university or college there. So I worked hard to get to, um, you know, to achieve my goal of going to abroad to study. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I picked up psychology because I was really intrigued when I took a psychology 101 class. It was very interesting to see that, you know, how complex humans are and why we do the things that we do and to really understand people. So I picked up psychology wanting to be a child psychologist, actually. But um, I realized that psychology actually applies to a lot of other different fields and it mm-hmm. actually helps in even from day-to-day interactions so for example in data science um, you know we we work with a lot of very complex data and we make sense out of it and from the data that we make sense out of we have to communicate it to our audience in a way that is digestible and I think psychology really helps in understanding the audience first and then thinking of what is the best way to communicate this message to them so yeah I think psychology has really helped me in not just my career but in everything in my life. Okay so that's interesting because how did you know that you wanted to go to the states out of the other countries or was it just like you know any university that would accept me which is abroad then I'll do that? Um, I actually focused on going to America because of the education system. I like Mm -hmm. how it's not so rigid as, you know, like we decide on one thing and we just have to follow through and, and, um, you know, follow through with a certain degree and it's hard to change, move around depending on, because we're constantly growing and we're constantly learning what we like and what we don't like. So, you know, like how can you expect an 18 year old to decide what they want to do now for the rest of their lives? So I like that in America, you get the flexibility to kind of explore a little bit and then decide what you eventually want to pursue. That's interesting. It's interesting how you picked out on like the education system in the US. I mean, this is something which I recently realized and just wanted to pick on as part of the um, of the podcast, which is, you know, when you kind of look at the at the US today, um, with how they're handling the COVID crisis, you kind of see, first and foremost, you know, a a very irresponsible president and someone who is, you know, at a a borderline of, you know, whether is he really sane or, you know, is, is is it just pure stupidity? And then you kind of see a lot of the followers and he, and his supporters, and all of them probably went through the same education system, but yet, you know, are seem to to be very ignorant of you know the world around them. So it feels like you know, their world is just this state. 
within the US and that's it. And so you, know, you kind of try to wonder at what point um, is that, you know, the education that, for example, that you went through in the US, because I went to the UK, right? And obviously I, I did a bit of the UK and then I did go to the US to run my, to have my internship. And I felt, oh my God, why did I never, why did I never think about wanting to study in the US? Because I felt, you know, the US had so much more creativity, freedom of expression and the ability to, you know, make new friends and meet new people. Whereas in the UK, people were a lot more cold uh, compared to the US. In the US, people were more friendly. But then when you look at things today, and then you kind of question about, mm, you know, what was it, what is it about the education system? Uh, and it's not that perfect after all, right? So every education system around the world has its flaws. And, and, and I don't think any country for that matter has has got it right so there's a lot more work that we need to do in the education system so it's something you know that, that that's been on my mind and just wanted to, to share it with you if you have any thoughts just feel free to, to throw it back but yeah so um that's interesting especially for a girl who who's you know gone on to uh, learning data science and also kickboxing right so tell us a bit more about how did you you know pick up kickboxing as a, a as a main sport yeah, so I was brought, or I wouldn't say dragged, but I was brought into my first kickboxing class uh, when I was, I think I was 15 at that time. Um, yeah, my best friend, Bella, she, she, you know, she was kickboxing at the center in, um, in Sri Hatamas, and uh, she was telling me like, oh, Karina, you have to try this out. This is, you know, it's so fun. It's great exercise. So yeah, I just, you know, went along with her and she, um, you know, from, from there, I met a lot of people in the kickboxing gym that were super friendly, super supportive. And, you know, everyone was always pushing each other to do better than they, uh, better than yesterday. And, and um, yeah, that's how I, you know, I initially got into it as more of a hobby. And then um, the more I trained, uh, my, my instructor asked me if I wanted to start training for competitions because he did send out people from the gym uh, to competitions abroad. So yeah, that's when I, I was like, should I, should I not? Am I good enough? And, you know, I was just like, okay, just do it, you know, just try it out. I mean, worst comes to worst, I don't win, whatever, it's fine. But okay, yeah, yeah, Sorry. kickboxing is a big has been a big part of my life, and it's really helped me um, grow as a person mentally, physically. Yeah. So that's interesting. So when you say kickboxing has really helped you grow, what were the where was the part where you felt that you were probably in need of a little bit of guidance and then through kickboxing that probably helped you find either you know the path or it gave you some form of clarity and it, or it gave you the courage to pursue certain things yeah i think i was uh i would say that i uh, was quite a shy um person when i was younger i didn't have very good self-esteem and I think, and Sorry, can I in, uh, interject and in and ask why why did you not have a uh, good self esteem? Um, I think it's just it probably I guess you know first there's nature and there's nurture right like some of us are born having different personalities, um, but I think in terms of the nurture aspect, I think in school and um, yeah, in school, we're not really encouraged to express our opinions. We're not very, really encouraged to speak out. And because mm -hmm. of that, that con you know, by nature, I'm already, I was already pretty shy. So that kind of, you know, kind of um, made that even more difficult. Felt it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, I think, you know, through kickboxing, like, um, and, and also when, you know, it's natural growing up, people tell you what they think of you, like your parents would tell you, oh, you know, you're this sort of person, or you're that sort of mm -hmm. person, you're mm -hmm. good at this, you probably wouldn't be too good at this before you even get to try it, you know, yeah. so we have all these ideas about ourselves growing up from based on other people's perspective on us, but yeah. we don't really stop to think, like, who do I want to be, and who do I want to like, how do I want to build myself and what do I want to strive to be? So I think through kickboxing, 
um, you know, it's the total kind of the total opposite of what people told me I was naturally like, you know, they said, mm -hmm. you're soft, you're shy, and you should be, I don't know, you probably wouldn't be the, an idea of what a kickboxer uh, is. So, yeah, but then, you know, with like, su the support from the community at the gym, like, um, I really managed to break through that and kind of, for once, I was like, wow, I actually redefined myself. You know, I that actually, yeah. yeah, so Beautiful. I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned from, from being in kickboxing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so nice to hear. What, what is your, what is your, one of your, one of your biggest challenges growing up? Um, one of my biggest challenges, I think it was just my confidence and believing in myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I, um, and a lot of us do, we, we seek for validation from other people for us to believe that we are a certain thing. Um, yep. So it's definitely been something that I've been working on. And I think through, um, you know, learning to own my story and learning to own my life, my experience and sharing it with, you know, like, like on this podcast with you, like owning that, that I have a story and this is valid, this is me. And I yep. think that kind of grounds you and gives you that confidence that, um, you know, like you are you and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. So I usually um, talk a lot about purpose and how that helps give us clarity in life, right? So, you know, given your biggest challenge in life is about confidence and, and being able to strengthen your or, or believe in yourself and, and build that self-esteem further. How do you relate this with a sense of purpose or being able to find your purpose? Has kickboxing helped you do that or has that kind of naturally come about through other things? Um, I think my sense of, I think my purpose my sense of purpose in life is always changing depending on the context, you know, depending on where I'm at in life or how I view certain things. And I think I, I used to think that we all had one purpose in life and we, that's what we had to discover. But what I realized is that we have many purposes in life. And as we live and as we move on in life, that's when we, that's when we, um, you know, slowly uncover or discover these you know, uh, areas. So right now, I would say that at this point of time, um, you know, I really want to champion like youth empowerment and making sure that young people are given the opportunity to speak out and given the opportunity to, um, you know, to, to dream big and pursue their dreams. I really like that. So, you know, being able to understand that our you know, our sense of purpose or the purpose in life is a, it's a continuously evolving journey, right? So as we learn new things, as we experience new things, and I think that sense of purpose gets tweaked. And like you said, depending on situation to situation, and that's fine. And there'll be times where, you know, in between that evolving, there will be parts where we're still, oh, actually, I thought I was on this path. And all of a sudden now, given this new information, I feel a bit lost now because everything just seems like with this new information that doesn't seem so right anymore, that path that I was supposed to go down. And, and the point that I wanted to um, highlight uh, or stress upon is because so when, when young people are listening to this is that I want them to know that every, almost everyone goes through this journey, especially when they're young, right? Because they're just about the craft you know, who am I as a person, uh, you know, being able to fight that stream of um, environmental expectations, either through family, teachers, friends, etc. And everyone's trying to build and trying to find their own, who am I, who is Karina Young, for example. So I think that, you know, you've done that really well, despite, you know, being this person who's quite shy, etc. But, you know, the fact that you've done so much and, and experienced so much, I would say, I wouldn't be able to tell at all if you had not said that. Right. Um, and, and I think you're a very polite person, which is great, great mannerism. So tell us a bit more about your experience in Silicon Valley. Yeah, so um, so after graduation, uh, internet, it's very, very, very tough for international students to stay in America. Mm -hmm. So firstly, you need to get a job. Uh, secondly, that job has to sponsor uh, a work visa for you. 
um, you know, the work visa process is a pretty tedious process. And on top of that, after they submit your work visa, it goes into this lottery system where it's randomly selected visas that get approved or rejected because mm. they have a certain quota for international students and not everyone gets, you know, it's the people, the number of applicants, you know, um, are much bigger than that quota. So yeah, it was a struggle for me to find a job. Um, I applied to actually over 300 jobs in America. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's perseverance and determination. <laughs> Lots of determination. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and where did that finally land you? Hmm? Where did it, that finally land you? So yeah, I ended up at um, an e-commerce uh, startup. They, um, they're they create merchandise for creators, YouTubers, and yeah, it's an online platform. Um, yeah, so that's where I ended up. Um, it was my first job and I was very excited. Um, they also did sponsor my work visa. And yeah, I, I had the, the best, you know, close to two years in Silicon Valley um, with, it, with my job as well as I was also working for a nonprofit on the side. Um, mm fresh graduates, uh, you know, break into the tech industry. Um, I was also working a lot of, you know, I, like one-off like tech events. I would sign up, you know, go out on weekends, work and meet new people. And it was, yeah, it was a crazy ride, but I think I really learned a lot and I met a lot of people, learned a lot of new perspectives. And what was it, what was some of the learning? Um, I think one thing that I really, I mean, that really stuck with me till now is, is the kind of, I would say it would be like the people that I met. So the people were very, um, well, at least the people that I was surrounded with, um, everyone had, everyone um, had bigger, was, was always chasing something bigger. Like mm -hmm. people were always questioning like, the purpose and the meaning behind their what they do every day like in their careers is it fulfilling um, does it fulfill them is it contributing to society and if it wasn't or if they felt like something was lacking somewhere you know I, I knew a lot of people who had full-time jobs but were also running their own nonprofits on the side or building their own companies on the side so I think just that hustle and you know when people talk about the American dream like that really was what I experienced. Everyone was chasing something bigger than themselves. And I think that really inspired me and really motivated me. Yeah. And so that also pushed you to start something in the side or you were actively involved in the nonprofit? Yeah, I was actively involved in nonprofit. It would be, yeah, it would be work, uh, 9 to 5.30, 6 o'clock. And then from 6.30 to 9.30 on weeknights, I would um, be working at the nonprofit. With these, oh, wow. yeah, these students. So you've worked in the US for two years and have you how long have you worked in Malaysia? So I recent I came back um, towards the end of last year uh, and I decided to take some time off um, travel. I was traveling around quite a bit and I started um, my new job in January this year. So I've only been at this job for about four months now. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's enough to, to uh, share with the audience in terms of like the difference in the, in the style and culture of working in the US and in Malaysia? Um, I think just based on my experience here so far, so the company I work for, they're kind of, they kind of operate like a startup as well. They've only been around for two years, but mm -hmm. the growth, they've had tremendous growth. Um, there's about 500 employees in nine wow. different markets, mm -hmm. yeah. But they still, um, they have great culture, I would say. It's quite, it's a less traditionally like hierarchical structure that yep. you typically would see in most traditional companies here. Um, mm -hmm. So it's actually, I was, you know, I'm very grateful that it's been pretty similar to what I experienced in terms of like the work culture and stuff in, in America. And yeah, I think, the difference I would say would it would be more on an individual level like I mentioned just now like that what people how people view their careers and how people um, 
search for deeper like meaning and purpose and how so does that happen here as well in Malaysia that people constantly on a daily basis question you know what's their sense of purpose are they being fulfilled at this job etc um I would say that there are people who who definitely you know think of you know think deeper into their careers etc but um I would say maybe less from my experience. You know, it's, you don't, you know, and in, in, when I was in Silicon Valley, like people in my workplace, people um, that I met at events, everyone was talking about it. Everyone was kind of on the same wavelength. Whereas over here, I think just from my personal experience, there have, like I, it's harder to come by. Like people who, yeah, those people are harder to come by. Yeah. Mm, okay. So next question, what gaps or social injustices that you've heard or probably personally experienced or witnessed that's driven you to champion youth empowerment? Um, I think it's not really a specific incident. It's more of what, how I view, um, how I view where we should start developing people and where and when we should start the development so you know like i you the youth are the leaders of tomorrow and we i think not enough attention and not enough um yeah not enough attention is and focus is placed on developing the youth if you look at most programs they are for you know like in the in the private sector for um high level executives you know like that's when they start developing um you know your skills your interpersonal skills and stuff but i think it's i think it's important to start with the youth you know it's important to start when they're young and i also see a lot of um a lot of times people don't um how should i put it people don't give enough um attention or don't take the youth seriously enough in not in all cases but um you know like in a lot of um a, a few in, in quite a few like i would say more of work environments mm -hmm. and i think the youth has a lot to offer and we need to teach the youth to um, be able to champion themselves and to be able to advocate for themselves because if they don't who else is going to yeah so I think it's just the my overall view on when when this development should start. And I really resonate with your words. And that's one of the reasons why I started the Society of Shapers is because I really believe that we have um, a missing voice uh, amongst the youth, especially in, in, in Malaysia, when it comes to um, just anything that's re with regards to governments, uh, decision making, public policy, etc. So you do have, you know, lots of activists out there, lots of NGOs doing great work, but I feel that there's no platform that actually um, brings to mainstream the voices of the young. And I think we had a chat before this as well. And usually a lot of the mainstream media, you would listen to all successful professionals or successful politicians, you know, and ministers, those who've already made it and a lot more um, se senior, especially in their career. And it is really the voices of the young who should be uh, voices that we we want to consider, we want to listen to, because you know, it is their views that matters in terms of shaping our public policy as we move forward into the future. What is it that we should be caring about? You know, so there are many things which are happening now, especially which is you know, a lot of the gaps or the weaknesses within the system is now becoming a lot more apparent, right? As we are in the lockdown, in terms of the the breaking of our economic systems, the break the break of our you know lots of um, on capitalism just in the states and the and the strength of the states and the nations as you can compare between the west and the east today, and and it's good because then it makes a lot of people to start thinking about you know what have we always been putting on a pedestal all this while right so a lot of times we typically look to the west for answers and solutions. But you know, today 
it is so apparent that they don't have their ducks in a row, that they are also, um, you know, swimming to to just keep themselves afloat in terms of what to do today. And it's a, a very broken system and one that we don't want to be um, continuing, right? We want to have big ideas. We want to have new ideas. We need to pivot and we need to pivot fast. And how do we do that? And so that's that's the one thing that I think, you know, this these, these discussions is not happening enough with the youth. Uh, and it should be encouraged more, as you said, you know, with the youth empowerment. It is really to challenge their, you know, the youth narratives to help and support them um, find their, that sense of purpose, right? To be able to push them in terms of the way how they think about things or, or to help them remove filters, etc. right? So I think, you know, being able to speak to you, for example, has also given, so I, I am out of the youth bracket already, obviously, <laughs> but, you know, really, so before I started Cycle Shapers, I said to myself, what advice would I give myself 20 years ago, right? And what would have I been really grateful for 20 years ago? What kind of advice? What kind of people uh, whom I would really appreciate advice from? And then, and basically Society Shapers is, 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 uh, is that's how it was born, right? So being able to, to tell the youth today things which, you know, along the way I felt if only somebody had told me this earlier, I could have probably started something a lot earlier. And I think, you know, that's, that's the reason why. And I wanted to just to get more people thinking about these topics, these issues, so that we can propel more young female talent into the public sector. So moving on to the next question, which is relate, which is which relates to my point, is do you feel that our current political system and public sector space lacks female participation? Um, I mean, it's apparent in the in the public sector, but I think even in the um, in um, in the government, I mean, like looking at you know since the from the change of like our new government, we see definitely less female representation. I think there's um, their target is to have thirty percent uh, female representation in cabinet, but now we're seeing only around thirteen percent, which is also you know like a, a decrease from what was before. So yeah, definitely we need more female leaders, and I think it's you know, having women in leadership roles is more than just like a moral or ethical imperative. I think having diversity, um, you know, in, in having diversity leads to bigger discussions and it opens up the floor to, you know, to, to change uh, traditional ways of thinking. And, and yeah, it really challenges us to move and progress and move forward as a society. So yeah, definitely I feel like we are lacking, not just in our country, but in the world. And it's great that we have, you know, people like you who are championing and, you know, championing for this cause. Thank you. So one of the things that I, that just struck my mind as you said that, right? So you feel that there's a lack, but have there been conversations between you and your friends, for example, um, people who have been interested perhaps in politics, but actually doing something about it to get actively involved in politics, because that's one of the ways to get into government, right? By, by being involved in, 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 in politics first, yeah. and then you understand the system, et cetera. And, you know, is there, does that happen? Um, just in my friend group alone, a lot of people, I noticed that a lot of people are passionate about um, the topic, but when you, yeah, when you pose the question, like, do people actually want to get involved into politics to be that change? Many people would, or I, I haven't even asked that question to my friends because most of us don't even think of that, you know? Mm -hmm. We just have conversations around the topic, but we never think of, would we actually jump into, into the political scene to be that difference? Yeah. So that's interesting because, you know, have you also ever thought about why that is so? Is that because, so I'm, I'm kind of also thinking about it, right, in, to, in the sense of making a wild guess. Is it because there's a disconnect between, you know, the young and government or public sector? Maybe it's, oh, that's like a too serious of a sector. You know, it's easy if I just jump into entrepreneurship, that's easier, yeah. you know, and I have a lot of opinions. But th this is the problem, right? So one of the problems that I'm trying to solve also is that there will be a lot of people who will have a lot of different opinions. But I want to have a voice 
from opinions that matter, which means people who have the intellectual capacity, either from a technical perspective, and, and this should come from the young people, because you guys are the ones who are studying and you know coming up with all, understanding what are the latest things that's happening right in the world from your case studies, maybe textbooks, or just things that you're learning at school to also be able to share that and close that gap. But I feel that if, if there's this disconnect, what is, what is that? Like for you, what is that? I guess it's just also, it's a very foreign, you know, we tend to, even if we take risks, we tend to take, like, let's say if you want to start a company or go into entrepreneurship, you, if you have people around you that you have seen like representation in that, in that area, then you feel more comfortable jumping into something. But I don't, have or know any one any female um any females who are heavily involved in politics and anyone i mean i see them on tv or social media i see a few people but it's not within my circle or even someone that i resonate with so it's a very scary area to go it's, it's very scary to go into something that you don't really know much about or you don't really know how to get into you know what what is the reason that you know we don't see enough young female participation is it because you know the the pathway to being part of that is just a blur or it's pretty much non-existent and and i know a lot of young people have they they they, they have very strong opinions because you kind of see on social media, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone has an opinion, everyone's sharing, everyone um, is thinking practically, uh, everyone's using the common sense and that's great. But for some reason, these voices don't turn into something more tangible, i.e., you know, we don't see more people joining the public sector or even the political arena. And we keep on seeing this recycling of politicians especially in Malaysian politics. So how do we then help nurture or build a pathway or create a blueprint or you know, whatever that, that will then be that bridge so that that space won't look as scary? Because you know, to be honest, when I wanted to, to become an entrepreneur, that was actually, it, it, it was quite easy for me because you just had to register a company. Nobody's gonna stop you. Nobody's gonna say anything, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, you just need to find a product and then sell that product. You either make something or you become a reseller. That was not not difficult either. But at the same time, because you know, I, I experienced a lot of social injustices while growing up. And I felt that there were a lot of discrimina discrimination, especially towards women. But it, I, I felt completely helpless. Like I couldn't like that system and me were just you know worlds apart and there's just no way for me to be able to be in that circle and I and I and I wonder maybe that's still what a lot of youth today feel and how do we close that gap how do we make it less scary how do we make it um and how do we encourage more people to just try it out and even if they were going to try out what are they going to try out right so that's like unclear i think that's what i'm trying to peel off slowly with you know more podcasts that's coming through but thank you so much for sharing karina and i think you know we can we'll, we'll close off the the session i think lots of people have a lot to gain from you as well you're such a soft-spoken person and i love that about you very calm compared to me right i'm like all this energy um so in the last the last question i'm gonna pack it together so in terms of um, uh, your personal um, personal aspiration, who, who do you draw um, inspiration from? Are there any specific particular role models within Malaysia or just outside of Malaysia? So this is going to be a few questions, right? Who do you see as a role model? What is the maybe one book that you can recommend people to start reading that will help change their their views, their worldview in one way or the other. And finally, you know, what are the areas that you or your peers would seek for further support um, and help from a personal development perspective? I think I'll start with the areas that me and my peers would uh, yeah, sure. like to seek support or wish we had support in. I think one thing that we don't talk about enough is dealing with, um, you, know, you know, firstly, like in the mental health space, like dealing with like difficult, something as simple as dealing with difficult emotions. Um, mm. You know, like as women, we, we feel, you know, we tend to feel very deeply and 
emotions, expressing emotions and expressing difficult emotions are not encouraged in like, in what well, for me at work, you know, like, uh, and for a lot of my friends at work, like it's not encouraged and we have never been taught how to deal with these difficult emotions um, and learning that it's like normalizing emotions and learning that it's okay to feel but knowing how to master your emotions so you know when is the right time to express them and when is the right time to hold back we're just taught to suppress them um growing up so i think that's you know one of the things and yeah i think mental health and education and awareness is also another topic um i think we don't get enough of that growing up in school you know we were never really taught um you know we were never really taught and informed about our mental health. So I think, yeah, those are kind of areas that I wish we had more exposure to in school and even now, yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, the other one was, who do I draw inspiration from? Um, so I don't really have a specific role model. I kind of draw inspiration from different people around me as well as online and you know the uh, people that I watch and I, I who are the kind of people that you watch uh, I watch a lot of Oprah I think <laughs> has an incredible like depth of you know knowledge and incredible depth as a person and she understands the world and she puts things into perspective in ways that I would have never even thought of but I think um I, I draw ma mainly draw a lot of inspiration, you know, from day to day, like people around me, you know, I think there's always something to learn from everyone. Um, but I think I particularly at, really admire people who are, you know, who are kind, who are brave, who are confident, you know, in their own skin, but also people who are all that, but are also humble and they have humility and they also, you know, um, are always looking out for ways to lift others up. Those are the people that I really, really, who really, really inspire me. And I think I don't have to look as far as, you know, to a different country or someone who is a celebrity. I think there's so many people around me who do that. And yeah, I just pick up on those like inspiring moments every time I meet someone or speak to someone like that. Yeah. yeah so that's a very important point, Karina. So I thank you so much for your honesty sincerity and you know ability to share all your experiences in the in the most raw and authentic manner so to the listeners out there i hope you've enjoyed this episode on the societal shapers and hope to uh, hope that you will come and like the podcast and yeah get in touch with karina and myself so all right thank you so much everybody bye karina bye thank you so much for listening in if you liked it Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your friends. Be sure to tune in to the next episode, and to find out how to be part of Societal Shapers, head to www.plcadilla.com and check out our coaching programs. Catch you soon!